Yeah, so the next speaker is uh, Filip Sarnacic. So he graduated from both Ljubljan in Slovenia and Strasbourg in a chemistry and chemoinformatics master's degree. So he's doing his PhD under the supervision of uh, Vincent Robert. Where he didn't start, but he's going to work on a frustrated Lewis pearl, which uh, actually will study the heterolytical etero break of the H2 bond and uh, their role in catalysis. And with Professor Emmanuel Fromager, is working on Ensemble DFT, where it is going to introduce, I mean, he's going to talk about individual, how to extract individual correlation energies. So please, Philip, the stage is yours. So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Sayan, for your uh, introduction. And also uh, many thanks to the organizers of this student seminar series for an opportunity to present what I'm, or I'm working on. So today I'll be talking about uh, density-driven uh, correlations in ensemble density functional theory. Before I go into the main topic of my talk, I would just uh, briefly like to go through the essentials of ensemble DFT. So what I considered is the gross Oliveira cone or the Gok ensemble DFT, which is in principle exact uh, formalism for uh, description of ensembles of ground and excited states. So we have uh, arbitrary choice of uh, ground and excited states for some Hamiltonian. And what in this formalism uh, we can do is extract uh, individual and consequently excitation energies from uh, the what is known as the ensemble energy, which is simply a linear combination of individual energies for all the chosen states and uh, ensemble weights. So by knowing the weight dependence of this ensemble energy, we can have uh, individual and all the excitation energies back. So going a little bit further, this ensemble energy is a functional of the ensemble density, which is simply uh, similarly defined as linear combination of individual uh, interacting densities for all the states within the ensemble. And this ensemble density is what we are looking to reproduce when we consider a system, a auxiliary non-interacting system of uh, single particle uh, orbitals. So kind of a generalization of the Consham uh, system in the Consham DFT for ground states. And now the only difference between the Consham DFT and the ensemble, this ensemble generalization is that the hard to exchange correlation functional, which we're looking to approximate is weight dependent. Uh, so depends on this collection of weights that we use to construct the ensemble. So this is one of the major drawbacks of this ensemble DFT approach. However, if we were able to obtain, uh, to model accurate, uh, efficient approximate approximations for this, for this uh, ensemble version of the hard to exchange correlation functional, we would actually get the whole collection of individual uh, energies and consequently all the excitation energies with essentially similar if not the same computational cost as in regular Consham DFT. So this ensemble density object is then after obtaining the single particle orbitals can be constructed, reconstructed back from what are known as non-interacting densities or individual non-interacting densities. So to summarize uh, what I just said is, is that in the ensemble DFT, we have a choice of uh, of choice of uh, a, a set of states for which each for each state corresponds a uh, interacting density, and what we get back from this uh, consham ensemble version of consham system are also a set of individual non-interacting densities, and both of these densities, either interacting or non-interacting densities, give back the same ensemble density. However, this constraint does not imply that uh, densities individually. So for example, ground state and interacting and non-interacting density individually are the same. And they individually, in fact, those densities do not, uh, are not equal, they differ. 
And this has important implications uh, that I'll be talking later on, which uh, give rise to uh, what is termed as state and uh, density driven correlation energies. So let's talk now about this uh, co uh, hard to exchange correlation functional. As I said, the main difficulty of this hard to exchange correlation function is modeling the wave dependence. Uh, actually, this is the bottleneck of ensemble DFT. Uh, how, now, if we take a closer look at the ensemble correlation energy, uh, one of the earlier attempts, as far as I know, to describe, to approximate this ensemble correlation energy was to use, uh, as was put in this paper of Filato, was to use uh, individual uh, ground state approximations for uh, individual uh, components to this ensemble correlation energy. However, these uh, ground state approximations were evaluated by plugging in those individual non-interacting densities that we get back from the Konsham equations. But this ground state uh, functional is of course uh, valid for the ground state where the non-interacting and interacting density is the same. However, as I said, in ensemble, this is no longer the case because we are looking to reproduce only the ensemble density and not uh, individual densities. So to justify any approximations for or any development for this ensemble correlation energy, we need to look at uh, some in principle exact uh, expression, rigorous expression. And in fact, this such an expression exists, which was uh, put forward by Emmanuel uh, Fomager in his paper in 2020. And now the exact expression for this ensemble correlation energy is a weighted sum of what is known as individual correlation energies for all the states within the ensemble. And because the ensemble energy is linear with respect to all the weights, we can extract out and define for each individual energy, uh, this individual correlation energies within the ensemble. Uh, what we get is something, as we see, that for each individual correlation energy, there are contributions not only for a given uh, non-interacting state J, but also all the other non-interacting states. So the non-interacting states that we get from uh, the Konsham system are inextricably link uh, all the, correlation, the individual correlation uh, energies. So what was proposed in previous works, uh, firstly, in the paper of Tim Gould and Stefano Pitalis, and then also by uh, Emmanuel Fomager, is to decompose the individual correlation energies for every given state into what is known as state-driven correlation and density-driven correlation. So this is, uh, there is some arbitrariness to definitions, but what we can look, uh, take a look is uh, that for everything that belongs to a given state J, we call it state-driven correlation and all the expectation values that belong to other states that contribute to some correlation to a given individual correlation energy we term as density driven correlation. And the same can be done then on the ensemble level by summing up all the individual correlation energies. And what we get are ensemble state driven correlation and uh, ensemble uh, density driven correlation. So by this decomposition, the ensemble uh, density driven correlation energy is then uh, weighted a combination of expectation of these expectation values in the equation below and where the expectation value now includes the linear response of all the uh, non-interacting states with respect to ensemble weights. And this is something that uh, does not exist in uh, ground state DFT. So this is something that uh, only exists when we move towards ensembles. So what I did is I applied this exact uh, decomposition uh, on the 
toy model, in particular on the asymmetric Hubbard dimer model. Because I use this model because uh, we can get all the pertinent functionals uh, analytically. So we have all the analytical expressions and the density simply reduces to a number of electrons on uh, side zero, so on side with the lower potential energy. So now I consider in this Hubert model, the ensemble of ground state and first excited state in the singlet subspace. So in this figure on the left, we can see when the full, full uh, curves uh, depict the individual interacting densities, which do not vary with the weight. But then when we take a look at the individual uh, non-interacting densities, we see that the ground state density changes uh, with the weight. So we cannot expect by taking simply individual non-interacting densities that we would get uh, accurate approximations for correlation functionals. And in fact, this difference between non-interacting and interacting densities gives rise to density-driven correlations. So just to see what's going on, I plotted here the correlation energy, the ensemble correlation energy for the same uh, Huber dimer in this strongly correlated case. And as we see here, when we are in the zero weight limit, the correlation energy then is purely state driven, almost purely state driven. And then when we go towards the equi ensemble of ground and first excited state, the, the although the correlation energy is, goes uh, uh, very small, the state driven and density driven correlations, in fact, uh, compensate each other. And if we are to, in this case, we, we can see that if we are to model accurately the ensemble correlation energy and use this decomposition, so if we are to base our approximations on this decomposition, we would have to model both state and uh, the, those uh, density-driven uh, correlations uh, accurately. Otherwise, we would get completely wrong results. So to conclude uh, my talk, I would, uh, so as I said, the, this uh, GOC ensemble DFT allows for extraction of it's kind of a time independent uh, formalism for allowing extraction of neutral excitation energies. And in this formalism, there exists a new, uh, a special kind of correlation energy uh, density called the density driven correlations, which are uh, peculiar to ensembles, the many electron ensembles. And for this type of correlation, there's still, we would need a scheme to develop this approximate density functionals. Also in passing, I would like to mention that uh, a similar theory uh, and centered ensemble DFT, which was first uh, proposed also in our lab by Emmanuel Fomager, is which allows for extraction of charged excitations. So where the number of electrons changes. So all this formalism that I just talked about can be applied on this, in the framework of this uncentered ensemble DFT to model to calculate the ionization potential and electron affinity, for example. And there is a new paper in uh, development now in preparation that will be published this year. So with this, I would like to uh, conclude our talk and. Thank you all for uh, uh, thank you all for uh, your attention.